This is a tutorial on how to do some of the basics in Flash programming. We're going to make a button that makes an arrow here fly through the air and hit a target. We're going to test whether that target's been hit and we're going to change the arrow so that it changes position depending on where this little knight moves around the screen. Now what I've drawn here is I have my obviously my little knight. Now all of these things are drawings, nothing is actually converted to a symbol yet. I have a drawing, I'm going to make this shape here my button. I have an arrow which is going to move through the air and I have a target that's going to be hit. Now I'm going to convert this top one here first to a button and I need to make sure I've selected all of it first. Once I've done that, I convert to symbol and I make sure that this here says button and I'm going to give it a meaningful name. That starts with the prefix of BTN. Now you'll notice this makes it easier when you get a lot of buttons and a lot of symbols in your library. You'll be able, because it'll sort alphabetically, you'll be able to go straight away to the things that are buttons as opposed to symbols. You'll also notice that I've capitalised the first letter of the second word, but not of the first word. This is just a programming convention in Flash, and you'll notice later on it makes it a little bit easier that you don't have to worry about where the capitals are, because Flash actually is concerned with where the capitals are. So if I make sure that consistently, I make sure that the first one isn't capitalised, and the second one, and the third one, and the fourth one, so on, is then that's a convention that I can remember which will make it easier for me. So once I've done that, I'm going to hit OK. And you'll notice that I get this blue line around it here and in the properties I've got it as a button. Now one thing I'm going to do with all my symbols if I'm programming is also give it an instance name. So if I don't do this, you'll notice if I have my library here and I can drag things out of my library, I can make a number of buttons now I don't know which one of these buttons I'm referring to in the code unless I give it an instance name because these all have exactly the same symbol name. So I'm going to delete these buttons now and just give this one an instance name of button um, test animation. Done. Now this little knight here, I want him to be a movie clip because I want him to move around. So you'll notice that when I make a symbol now, it'll default back to the previous one that I've picked. So I need to make sure that I double check that. I'm going to call him Knight. And I am going to give him an instance name. Let's give him an actual name. Hmm, Stephen. Our Knight is now Stephen. Oops. But I need to make sure that I follow my conventions and the bottom, the first letter here is not capitalised. Now I'm going to change the arrow also to a symbol and I'm going to call it arrow. Now I'm once I've done that, that's called an arrow, I'm actually going to convert it to symbol again. So I'm going to convert the arrow to a symbol twice. I can't give it the same name so I'm going to give it arrow 2, make sure it's a movie clip and the reason that I've done that you'll see later on but if you notice that I'm at the moment I'm in scene one and this is arrow and if I double click on it notice I'm inside the arrow but this is actually still a symbol that means that I can motion tween it still if I hadn't have done that it would have just been a graphic and I can't actually motion tween a, a shape so if I go back to scene one now my target I also want it to be a movie clip as well but I want these two circles to be different movie clips. The reason is I actually only want the arrow to intersect with this one and hit test on this target, not the outside target. So I'm going to convert that to a symbol and call it target. And I'm going to convert this to a symbol and call this red target. Now, what haven't I given instance names to? Because that's important. This one has an instance name. This one has an instance name. Oh, my arrow doesn't. So I'm going to call this shot. And I'm going to call this middle one here, white target. And my outside one here, red target. 
so that I can tell the difference between them. Now, so everything has an instance name and everything is either a symbol or a button on my animation now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix up my arrow so that it has some animation when I click on this button. So if I double click on the arrow now to go inside it, you'll notice that I have a different timeline for each symbol on the stage. So if I go back to scene one, you'll notice that these layers here, I have different um, layers. And if I put in a keyframe here, for example, um, and obviously my knight is on a different layer, I insert keyframes here, that has 15 frames of your animation. And now if I double click on the arrow, you'll notice that they all go. They actually don't go, it's a timeline specific to that arrow. So here I've got an arrow two, which is my first arrow. Now what I'm going to do is I need to animate this so it moves. So I'm going to add a keyframe at the beginning and two keyframes at the end. So I've got one keyframe, two keyframes, one keyframe, two keyframes. Now, for the first and the last keyframe, I need to add an action because what I want that arrow to do is actually sit still on that one until I tell it to go to frame two. So the way I do this is I go window actions and I type in stop. Open bracket, close bracket and a semicolon. A semicolon is really important, don't forget to put that in. And I'm going to do the same thing for the final arrow. Stop. So I've got a stop script now. You'll notice if you have a look at the um, frames here, I've got a uh, little a above the first arrow and a little bit a above the second arrow. Now, so what happens is it'll stop and then when I tell it to go to frame two, it'll go to frame two and it'll play through the animation until it gets back here and it will stop again. So what I need to do now is to make the animation. So this goes from here over to the target. Now, my first frame is already in position, that's fine. So what I'm going to do is move my second Sorry, I'm not going to do that. If I was in CS3, I would be doing that. In CS3, you would have two frames here and you would motion tween between them. In CS4, what you have to do is somewhere between the, the two frames here, click here and go create motion tween. Now you'll notice that straight away that fills in blue and I've got one keyframe here, but I actually don't have any keyframe at the end. Now, if I was in CS3, I would be moving this frame here. But since this is CS4, I actually have to go to the frame before it, which is the end of the motion tween, and move it there. So I'm just going to select it and move it across. Now you'll notice straight away that it inserts a keyframe automatically for you on that frame. And if you scroll through any of the previous positions, it will actually show you where everything is. Now arrows have some weight so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover above this line here which is the path of the animation and I'm just going to click and drag that up so it goes here. Now if I scrub that, oh that's good. Now arrows also don't move so that they're flat as they go forward. As this goes along it should turn and hit the target. So I'm going to go back to my end frame here and I'm going to use the free transform tool to transform that so it's pointed down. Now my arrow should go down. Great. So I've got stop script here, then it's going to tell it to go to frame two when I press on the button, and I'm going to scroll through and hit that. Great. Now if I go back to scene one, so what I now have is an arrow that will fly through the air and hit here, and I have a button that doesn't do anything at the moment, and a knight that doesn't do anything either. So if I play this at the moment, nothing actually happens. The reason is I've got that stop script on the first frame of this arrow, so it's stopping on frame one and it's not doing anything. 